Hey everyone and uh, welcome. Welcome to anyone who's coming across this channel for the first time and welcome back to all of my returning subbies. We're really growing on TikTok, we're growing on YouTube, I'm really grateful for that. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And if you've subscribed, then tune in. Today I'm just going to do a short video on interview tips, which I promised someone in the comments. So this is the video. Um, yeah, nice and short, like I said, interview tips, that's what we're doing. Doesn't matter what stage of your career you are, these tips are, you know, useful throughout, right? Whenever you're interviewing. And it doesn't matter if you're interviewing for a job, a role in res, on a committee, in, you know, a subcommittee, in VSOC, anything that you, you, you're basically trying to get into, these tips can be important. So the first one is, I made notes because I forget. <laughs> Uh, tell me about yourself, right? So you need to keep that question brief and you need to tailor it to what you're, you're interviewing for, right? So if you're interviewing for Housecom, hi, my name is Tando. I am a finance major, which I think would make me really great for the treasury portfolio. I really enjoy the practical side of things and I'd love to, you know, uh, you know, understand the practical side of things and practice it out, out outside of you know the classroom environment, which is why I applied for this role. I've been at uh, XYZ Res for the past two years, and I've attended some of the events, and I learned a lot. I've spoken, I've reached out to people on the existing committee, and I really think my skills would be beneficial in that. Um, that and the fact that I'm really good with computers, um, I think I could really add value to the committee as a whole. Right, so you've told them about yourself, but you haven't told them what you like, what you don't like, what your favorite chocolate is, right? You've, you've basically spoken about the role that you're applying for, which is the treasury portfolio in a committee, and then you've told them a bit about why you're applying for it and how those two things come together. So like I said, brief, uh, tailored to what you're applying for, and yeah, concise. Give them a little bit to ask more about, but also make it clear that, look, I know why we're here. I'm not your peer. We're not chatting. You're not meeting me at a club. You're not meeting me on a run. We're here in an interview situation. So the tell me about yourself speaks to that. So that's very important. Number two, don't lie about your skill set. This is like work professional uh, interviews now. Don't lie about your skill set. Two reasons, right? So I'm a very, like, I'm a very logical person. So... That and the fact that I can't, uh, I can't remember things very well, so my memory is just, it's not, it's not very good. So for me, it's like if you lie about your skill set, then there are one of two things: one, you're lying to a potential employer. So if that person gets you on board, and then you don't know how to do the work, then <laughs> you're, you, you, you're in a bit of a, a jam, right? Um, so that's not going to be helpful. And the second part is. If you're lying and then you don't get the job, then what was the point? Do you understand? So just think about it. You lie, you get the job, you can't do the work, you get found out. You literally get in there and then you're waiting to be found out. That, that anxiety, Jay, like that doesn't sit well with me. Um, and then the second one is you're lying and then there's absolutely no need to lie because you haven't gotten the job and now you've lied. You understand? So that's just something that you need to be mindful of. Don't lie about your skill set. Be eager and stress that you are eager and willing and able to learn, if you are. If you can't learn things quickly, don't say you can, right? But if they ask specifically, do you know how to do Power BI? Be like, no, but at my previous role, I really picked up SAS in a short amount of time and I was able to help my old manager, you know, get on top of old a, a, a legacy SAS code and get it up and running again, right? So that shows that you are able to learn. You have historically been able to pick up a new skill set quickly. So they're not going to be as worried about your ability to pick up Power BI, right? So that's very important. Also, they're asking because they know there's no Power BI on your CV already. Do you understand what I mean? So they know you don't know it, but they're still asking because that they're giving you an opportunity to say, look, I can pick that up. Or I've done Tableau, which is similar to Power BI. Do you know what I mean? So you would have known that they're gonna ask the Power BI question. Why? Because it would have been in the job spec. So you would have done the research. So you know that the role requires Power BI. You don't know Power BI. How do you handle a question where they're asking you about you know Power BI skill set? So that's something that's very important. But yeah, do not lie about your skill set. 
um, you know, you can preempt a lot of the questions, answer them as truthful and as honestly as possible. Um, but um, yeah, don't just say I don't know Power BI. That's also not very helpful. Do you know what I mean? So just listen to the first part of Power Answer That and then tailor your answers towards that. The third part, which is going to be the end of this, is questions at the end. Please have questions at the end. If you're an actuarial student, if you're an actuarial candidate, at the end, it might be a nice time to, to say, look, I hear that XYZ company has a really generous study policy. Can you tell me more about what happens um, if I you know, repeat a subject, right? So you would have done research about the study policy. You would have reached out to people in, in the company about the study policy. So, so don't ask something like, um, how is the study policy at, at, at your company? Right, that's too open-ended, and HR is not going to be, you know, eager to, to sort of unpack that. It's not to the point. It's not specific. It's not a good question to ask. If I'm, if I'm honest, right? A good question might be like what I what I suggested. I hear X Y Z has a really generous study policy. Um, can you tell me more about what happens on the third attempt for higher up exams? Um, so for core technicals, I understand you guys only pay for ABC, but for the higher ones, what they're, they're quite expensive. What happens if I've tried and failed, I've tried and failed on the third attempt? Would you, would, you, would the company be willing to meet me halfway? Um, what you're basically showing there is one, uh, eagerness to learn and continuous professional development, which is very important, right? Uh, it shows that you're going to be working and studying or working and upskilling yourself, which all employers really want, right? Two, the fact that you're saying for core technicals, for CTs, I know that the company does X, Y, Z, um, can you tell me more about this? Shows that you've done the research, you've spoken to people. That's impressive, right? You've spoken to people, you've done your own, you've done the groundwork. You're not coming there and you know nothing results. You're prepared for the interview and now you want to hear more about something, right? Um, another question that's really good is, I like to ask this, um, is this a new role or is this, um, is this a new role or is this a... a uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, uh, is this a, uh, my, would I be replacing, if I'm successful, would I be replacing someone um, in this role? So that's not too important for graduates, right? So the young ones can sit this one out. Um, but if it's an existing role, then it's great because you know that there are going to be key performance indicators already in place, right? If it's a new role, that, that, that there's an opportunity there to, to, to ask, okay, so what does success look like in this role, seeing as it is new? right and that that gets the manager the hiring manager to think okay cool if i don't have kpis in place and this person is, is you know successful she's gonna want she's going to expect uh, you know kpis measures in place to you know uh, um, measure her success um so it gets them thinking of it because a lot of the times if it's a new role the job spec will be very, very generic um it's the same as you know other business units but the, the hiring manager will know best exactly what he or she is looking for, um, you know, tailored to that candidate. So basically, you're, you're, you're giving them an opportunity to either say it out loud if they thought about it, or to go back and, you know, prepare for the onboarding and get, you know, get, get that correct in their mind. Because one, you're telling them that, look, um, I want to succeed in this role, which is always positive. Two, you're telling them, look, for me to succeed, I need to know what the measures are. Right, you can't tick a box if there is no box, predefined. Uh, so that's very important. And then I think the other question that I like asking is, uh, right, so I like asking, is there anything that um, in our you know, interaction or when you are looking at my CV makes you hesitant to move forward with me as a candidate? What that does is it allows the hiring manager and HR, they sort of gasp sometimes when they hear that. You can see it visibly, they, they, they don't expect it, which is why it's a good question. So it makes you stand out already. Um, it also enables, um, you know, the hiring managers to say what they're thinking before they confer um, after the call with HR and amongst each other, right? Because you won't be in that call, you won't be in the room. So you're enabling the, the hiring manager to say what they're thinking and for you to actually allay those fears if possible and then they can go back into the room and they have sort of a response from you. Whether they're happy with the response or not is another thing. But you're basically getting yourself into the after the interview room um, by Skellum, you understand, uh, by, by, by Skellum Key. 
because HR is unlikely to answer that question, right? Uh, but the hiring manager might, uh, especially if they're excited about you as a candidate, but there's something that's at the back of their mind, they'll usually just blurt it out, right? And then you can sort of answer, let's say they're a bit worried that uh, they're looking for a five-year candidate role and you've got three years of experience. Then you can say something like, all right, um, I understand that you know the, the role is for someone with five years of experience, but because I started in a small company, and I've done X, Y, and Z, like we've spoken to when we went through my, my experience, I do think that I've got the abilities, you know, uh, covered on the job spec and that I, uh, I can be able to step up and, you know, learn and deliver. Like delivery is very important and deliver, even though the, 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 the number of years required is, it is not a, an exact match. Um, so you're basically allaying their fears. And then you can speak about things like the job spec requires five years of experience. They require softer skills like A, B, C, D, which I have, you know, uh, learned uh, along my years. And in terms of the core technical skills, we've already spoken to that. Um, happy if there's a specific skill within that five year experience where I'm missing the gap that you think maybe I need to work on a bit. Um, but if there isn't, then I genuinely think that my three years of experience is more than enough to cover this role, even if it is a, a, a five-year spec. Um, like I said, soft skills are covered in scenarios like A, B, C, D, and then the core technicals are more than comfortable with, as I've shown in my certifications in A, B, C, or in the projects that I've described that I've, you know, not only helped on, but led in my, in my previous companies. Um, is there anything else? And then they can say something else or are you happy with the way that I've answered the question and then they can say yes. Then when they go back into the room and they're conferring about this particular candidate, one, they, they're happy that you know they've got some sort of response so they're not asking themselves um, about this question. It's not hanging at the back of their head. They have a response from you um, and then they can speak to other things of you as a candidate but there's not that one thing that's nagging at them why because you gave them the opportunity to ask it and you were able to answer like i said you literally got yourself into the room of the after interview um, um meeting which is usually the the hiring managers and hr so it's a very scalum way and a lot of managers actually answer a lot of managers answer even though you would expect them not to um so that, those are the three things i think are quite important like i said the tell me about yourself you have to keep that on lock keep it short keep it sweet it's the first time you're speaking give them a chance to speak um they'll be flattered also it's a time for listening right because if you're applying for a gig you're likely going to have a manager unless you're applying for a ceo role then you should not be watching my videos um so you they need to know that you can take instructions and taking instructions a lot of it involves listening the second one, not lying about your skill set, it's just going to drive you mad. Um, and then the third one, you have to have like, proper questions at the end, powerful questions at the end. Questions that are going to make you memorable when they're sitting and they've, they've been sitting in interviews for the whole day. And they've got five, six candidates that, are, that they've uh, thumbed through. Someone needs to say time to remember like, oh, the one who asked this. You yeah, understand what I mean? That's very important. Um, do a lot of listening. Ask important questions. I know there's no such thing as a stupid question, but there are. So avoid stupid questions in interview settings um, because they won't keep you memorable. You're unlikely to get a second call. You're unlikely to get shortlisted. Uh, so if you keep short, powerful questions, there doesn't need to be this whole back and forth and you know long engagement. Don't ask about the leave policy. Um, don't ask for the annual leave policy. You can ask about the study leave policy. I mean, I already mentioned that for the actuarial policy, study policy. Don't ask when you're gonna hear back. Don't ask about salary. <sighs> Please don't mention money um, and things like that. HR will reach out to you about that. Those are important questions, but those are questions that you can ask in a follow-up call, in a follow-up email. They're not urgent questions. They're not questions that allow you to understand the role better. They're not questions that allow them to understand you as a candidate better, which means they're not useful, right? Hiring managers are insanely busy. Right? It's difficult to get them into a meeting, into a 30 minute slot to see you. They literally slot you in at 3.30. At 3, they got out of a meeting where their manager was on top of them. And then at 4, they're going into a meeting with their direct reports where they have to relay the message that they got, which was harsh. They have to translate it into a way that 
is easy for their director post to receive and you're sort of in between at 3:30 so they hit space and all of that is a lot so keep things light keep it to the point keep it concise uh keep it meaningful and all of that you will get the time to ask the you know fluffy questions hr will call you or you can send a follow up email to hr but the hiring manager is 30 minutes they're giving you their time make it worthwhile make it memorable i'm going to cut the video here thank you for watching this far If you're returning Sabi again, thank you so much for you know helping us grow the channel. And then if you're new, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so that the next time I deliver something it comes straight to your phone.